Do you have some single family properties and you've considered if going into a multifamily syndication is right for you? Or are you a new investor and you're wondering if you should go single family or multifamily? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna explore those topics and show why multifamily is by far the better choice. Well, as we start out, I wanna say that this is a great question that you're asking. A lot of people really don't ask this question. They just think like, oh, I'm gonna be uh, do well with real estate. I'm gonna become financially free. And they start buying houses. And then they realize how much work it is. It is a ton of work. I thought this way before. I thought this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna eventually end up with a portfolio of single family homes. I only had a few. I had four single family homes. But I realized how much work it was. And I wasn't even the property manager. I had a property manager doing all the work. And I was getting, you know, every day, every week, there were things that were coming up. We were doing a rehab out of area. And the tenants, there were problems with the tenants. There were just a lot of issues. And so really what a lot of people find is that they start out thinking they're going to become financially free with single family. And it just does not turn out the way they should. So what I tell people is, no, 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 just avoid it. Just just go straight to multifamily, particularly if you're a professional or if you're someone who does well financially, your time is very valuable. And the more houses, even more small multifamily units that you put in there really gets to a point where it's not sustainable. So I have a relative that came to me who's really involved in multifamily. And I told him about my great plan about buying 30 single family houses out of state and retiring with passive income. And he said, well, it sounds like a, a lot of work. Why don't you do multifamily? And I just, I'd never really heard of multifamily syndication. I'd heard of it, but I just didn't really know much about it. And then I realized you could actually get into one of these very large apartment buildings and you could invest by only putting sometimes as small as $50,000 in, which is pretty amazing. So as I mentioned, the problem with single family housing rentals is that it's just not scalable. It's not something that you can literally take and say, okay, I've got one of these, I wanna have 100 or I wanna have 200. You need a lot of infrastructure in place to do that. Another thing that's interesting about it is it's somewhat of an inefficient asset class, meaning if I have a house or let's say I've got two houses that are on the opposite parts of town, you have to have the maintenance guy that comes out at 30 or 50 or however many dollars an hour and goes back and forth, goes to Home Depot, fixes this thing, comes back, goes and fixes over here. When you have 100 or 200 units in one place, you can have on-site people that you pay a salary to, which is really amazing. And so just the idea of having a single family house, it may break even, especially these days, you may have, be able to find one that breaks even or may make a couple hundred or 200 or $500 a month. But the challenge with it is it is a lot of work and it really is not passive. It is not scalable. I actually have a friend who has a single family house. He's paid it all off in cash. Now I live in California, so this is a house he basically has $450,000 cash in equity. There's no loan on the property. And his returns each year, he's making about a four to 5% return per year. But you'd think like, oh, compared to interest rates, that's pretty good, right? Like, no, that's actually really bad. That's actually pretty terrible. Multifamily syndication, we typically see very commonly 10 to 20% return per year on average over the life of a deal. We have some deals that are performing over 30% per year. And in a bad deal, typically is eight to 12%. Now, every investment has risk. Every, you know, I'm not saying giving you specific investment advice. Obviously, you consult your professional for that. But again, it's important that we look at actually how these properties perform and often single family does not perform the way that we actually would expect it to do and sometimes if it looks too good to be true as far as the income a lot of times the expenses are really low and they end up being much higher so they don't necessarily pencil out the way that we think that they would all right now i want to share with you some of the pros of multifamily investing this is what i love talking about so the first thing is it is truly scalable so it's something that if you have, you're invested in one deal, you do some diligence on the front end, you invest in it, and then you don't really have much time commitment afterwards, maybe you're reading the statements, it's not a whole lot of work. I know one person that's invested in over 70 deals currently, it seems a little excessive to me, but they love it, so good for them. But it is something that's truly scalable. So when you're sipping Mai Tais on the beach, not worrying about your investment because you're not taking calls to fix a toilet, or your property manager is not calling, asking for what they should do, you can thank me, send me a thank you card then. Secondly, I wanted to, to walk you through some things that uh, some other benefits of multifamily. So the benefits really, there's an incredible tax benefit that you get a lot of the money that you're making from the investment, you get to write off or you get to defer until later. It comes through what's called a cost segregation study, which is pretty amazing. I'm also going to show you a couple things here when it comes to just the higher returns in general are just better when you look at multifamily versus single family. And, and really that comes down to often that we undervalue our time. So if I undervalue my time, if I think, oh, this is great, I can do a single family and I get about 15% per year, but 
you're doing a lot of work on the property yourself or there's a lot of things that you're doing really undervaluing that. Another thing is that there's actually a, a lower risk profile. So you can take a look real quick at this chart here and it just shows that you know single family versus multifamily in the worst point of the recession in 2009, single family had a default rate of around 4% and large multifamily over 60 unit, it was 0.4% which is pretty amazing. So that's something that I always like to share because a lot of people, they, they just don't realize that you know multifamily is actually a very safe investment and it's something that a lot of people, they just never experience and that's why it's new for them. So anyway, so in summary, looking at single family and multifamily, do yourself a favor, really research multifamily syndication. What I tell folks is it's something that you can research, you can look into, you can you know get a few different groups that you're interested in and maybe invest in one deal and really see how you like it before you decide to start buying rental homes in your area or in another area, it's something to really consider. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in hearing about our investment club, we're doing multifamily deals regularly. You can go to bronstonequity.com slash join. You can check out our club there. We also have this report about investing during and after a pandemic. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.